returns to the Harbor Cats dugout along with Tyler Pettit back to home plate. Base runners for Burnaby. Horner at second base and Weger at first. Matthew Reyes at the plate and two runs already home here in this top of inning number four to take an early 2-0 lead. 3-0 pitch outside, and it, or inside I should say, and it's going to be ball four, so that'll load him up once again. Returns to the Harbor Cats dugout along with Tyler Pettit back to home plate. So the Bulldogs, for the second time in this inning, have the bases loaded. Last time, it was Nolan Weger driving in a pair with a base hit to left field. Here now is the right fielder, Trevor Fonseca, trying to do the same. Swinging a foul tip off the catcher's mask of Pettit, and it's nothing in one. That was uh, an important pitch there for Chester just to get a strike to start off the at-bat, get himself ahead in the count. So he's fallen behind a, a couple hitters already in this inning. Out to left center field, drifting over to it, making the catch in left is Sherrick, tagging. Horner will come home and he will score. So it's a sack fly for Trevor Fonseca and it scores the third run in the inning and it's a three nothing Burnaby lead. Now batting the center fielder, number 28, Jeff. So there's now two on and two out for the Bulldogs. Back to the top of the order for Jeff Bouchard, who's already two for two with a couple of base hits in the game. So Finn Chester has to be uh, weary of that. Weger at second base and Reyes at first. The nothing and nothing pitch to Bouchard is fouled away. It's nothing and one. No balls and a strike. Two on, two out for Burnaby here in the top of this fourth inning. And three runs already in to lead it three to nothing. Bouchard took a breaking pitch in the dirt. One ball and one strike now. And with this three run, top of the fourth inning, the Bulldogs now at hitting the Harbor Cats by a count of six to two. That one was running inside on Bouchard. Probably would have been ball two, but he swung and foul, tipped it to the backstop. It's now one and two the count. So Chester, one good pitch away from getting through this fourth inning. Three runs have come in, but trying to hold it there with a pair of runners still on base for the Bulldogs. One ball, two strikes. Chester with a look back at second, and now the pitch. Hit on the ground, softly to second. Tanner Haney scoops it up and throws it to first to retire the side. So it's a productive inning for the Bulldogs. They score three and have a three to nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Race out around Abby and back. Good stuff. Good stuff. Watch this in here, Hub. On your marks, get set, go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get to the bear, Nick, bro. Uh, 
We go to the home half of the fourth inning. Harbor Cats looking for a response after allowing three runs to come across for Burnaby in the top half. So it is a 3-0 Bulldogs lead here as we play the bottom now of the fourth. Tanner Haney leading off the inning for the Harbor Cats. 2-3-4 in their order with Haney, Playa, and then Pettit scheduled to hit. 2-0 the count. New pitcher on the hill for the Bulldogs, Alex Weber or Alex Webb, excuse me, pitched very well in his first three innings. But it'll be now on the mound, Jacob Mahone. He stands at six feet, 165 pounds. He's a native of Surrey, BC, and pitched at UBC in his college career. Last pitch was cued foul by Haney. It's two balls and one strike. Haney with a slow roller towards third base, scooped up there by Gaunt, and the throw across the diamond is in plenty of time at first. There's one down. So that'll bring in Nick Playa. Overall on the West Coast League season, Playa hitting at 255. He has 26 runs scored and 18 runs driven in, including eight doubles and four home runs. Also coming off of uh, earlier this week, an appearance in the West Coast League All-Star Game, one of six Harbor Cat All-Stars down in Bend, Oregon. Even count here, one ball, one strike. Playa flew out as well to center field in his first at bat as he takes ball two. Two balls, one strike the count. One away base is clear in the bottom of the fourth inning. Harbor Cats still trying to get their bats going. They'll test their luck now against Mahone out there. They did not get much going against Alex Webb in the first three innings. Good hitters count though. Here for Playa. Here's the 3-1. And he takes a strike. Playa thought that was ball four. But it's now a full count, three and two. Make him swing it. Three balls, two strikes. Playa with a bouncing ball towards the hole. It's flagged down deep at short. The long throw not going to be in time. And Playa reaches base with an infield hit. That uh, ground ball was perfectly placed between third and short, and by the time Weger got to it, deep in the hole, he was never going to have a chance to throw out the speedy Nick Playa. So Playa's one for two. That'll bring in the catcher, Tyler Pettit. Decent lead off of first for Playa. Would not be surprised to see him run as Pettit lines it foul down the third base side. No balls in one strike. Again, would not be a, a surprise to see Playa try to run. He's the type of guy who when the Harbor Cats need a spark, he'll provide it in whatever way he can, whether it's in the field with a, an exciting play or on the base paths. Outside, it's one ball, one strike. Now the 1-1 pitch, Playa not running on that one, and it's taken for ball two by Pettit. Matt Clayton waiting on the on-deck circle. Harbor Cats now up to three hits in the game. 
And all three of their hits have come in the last two innings in the third and the fourth. There goes Playa, swung on and missed by Pettit. There's not going to be a throw. Playa picked a good pitch to run on, a slow breaking ball that finished down and away. And so he has a stolen base up to second. It's now a two and two count on Pettit. So the Harbor Cats with a runner in scoring position and one out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Two and two pitches popped back out of play foul by Pettit. It remains two and two. But the Harbor Cats now with a couple of cracks with one out to try to come up with a base hit to give Playa a chance to score. Now the two and two pitch. Softly hit foul towards first. It remains two and two. Mahone set on the hill for Burnaby. The pitch yep. all the way to the backstop. There goes Playa for third. So it's now a three and two count. And with Nick Playa at third base now and less than two outs, Pettit here if he can put something in play, might have a chance to, to knock in a run without necessarily needing a hit. Full count, here's the pitch from Mahone, and it's not close. Nice at bat by Pettit, fouled off a couple of tough pitches, and takes his walk down to first base. So first and third, one away. Here's Matt Clayton, the extra hitter in the lineup for the Harbor Cats. Clayton 0 for 1. Here's the first pitch of his second at bat, and it's in the dirt. Nicely blocked there by the catcher, Hawkins. Also notice that Frankie Neiman now is coaching at first base for the Harbor Cats, so he's been everywhere despite being not on the field. Did the, uh, the race around the base paths. Running for second is Pettit, the throw down in time, and he's going to be out. So now two away in this bottom of the fourth inning, and it's going to take a base hit from Clayton here with two gone now to, to try to score Playa from third. Clayton with a high fly ball out to left field, racing back on it towards the warning track and making the catch before bumping into the wall is Horner and that'll end the inning. So the Harbor Cats held off the board here in the fourth inning. On we go to inning number five. It's three nothing, Burnaby. And a reminder, the end of the roll of 50-50 is being looked at by Variety and she's conquered cancer. Please support this great program. Also, don't forget to check out the Flight Center table as a reminder. Bert at our Two two pitches hit well down the left field line, going back, looking up, and it is gone. And the pitch. This one grounded up the middle, could be two. There is the flip to second for one. Haiti to first, double play. And Fox is set for another two two. Swing and a miss. He got him. And uh, those double play balls as well have helped him out. This one is caught on a dive. No, it's knocked down. The throw to first in time. Wagon Seller with a high fly ball. Deep left center field, and it is gone! And he's fifth in the league in RBIs as he grounds one to third, charging it with the bare hand spawn. The throw is in time! And the one two is a swing and a miss, strike three. Well, here's a ball hit well in the air, deep to left field, and this ball is gone! Nothing at two. Swing and a miss, he got him. And the 2-2. Two -two. 
Strike three called. He got him. Visual hit hard towards the hole. Diving stop made by Bigford. He gets to his feet, and that's the inning. And Lewis is running right away for second, and he is safe as the ball tips off him. And he'll now head on for third, and he's coming home. Here's Lewis for the plate, and he is safe. That if they work hard, they can still have a chance to, to make it in the West Coast League. There's a flip on to second, and that's the ball game. Echoes gets the ground ball to short, and that'll end it tonight. A big 15 to five. Victoria Playa trying to drive him in as he sends a high fly ball deep left center. Over to it, looking up at the wall, and gone. And Ortega sends for the first pitch, which is in on we go to inning number five here at Wilson's Group Stadium. It remains three to nothing Burnaby on top of the Harbor Cats in this non-league exhibition game. We have another new pitcher as well on the hill for Victoria. It is Jacob Potter, who is a Victoria native and from southeastern Oklahoma State. First pitch of the inning is popped up into shallow center and the catch is made by Ty Schindel. Four out number one. That was Brendan Gaunt, retired on one pitch to start. This top of the fifth. Next up is the first baseman, Braden Monroe. Now batting the first baseman, number 25, Braden Monroe. Well, Potter is listed at 6'2", 200 pounds. Again, he is a Victoria native, recent arrival from southeastern Oklahoma State. And he has made one appearance since uh, arriving in Victoria. That came back on July 21st against the Yakima Valley Pippins through a scoreless inning in a 12-4 defeat. Allowed two hits and struck out one in that inning. He's behind here, two balls and no strikes on Braden Monroe. And now here's the 2-0 pitch. Popped up down the third base side. And this ball is going to get down in front of Kyle Sherrick in left field. Just kept it fair, did Monroe down that left field line. Little bloop base hit does the job. And he is one for three now in the ball game. So that'll bring in the catcher Brody Hawkins now for the Bulldogs. He is one for two, scored a run as part of that last uh, inning for Burnaby, the three run top of the fourth. Fastball misses downstairs from Potter to Hawkins. One ball, no strikes. One on and one out for the Bulldogs. Here as we play the top of inning number five. And the 1-0 pitch is a bouncing ball towards third base, but it goes foul. One ball, one strike. Well, uh, a quick chance for us to do a little housekeeping here on Go Live Broadcast and Shaw Spotlight. A uh, chance for us to remind you that craft services for Go Live Broadcast are provided by Molly's Fish and Chips here in Victoria, B.C. And also a reminder for especially our, our Shaw audience is that you can watch all Harbor Cats home games online at golivebroadcast.com. And uh, all of the Harbor Cats home games are available on Go Live for $6.99 per game, including the playoffs. We know the Harbor Cats will have a home playoff game on August the 14th. This is a chance for two. There's the throw to first, and it's a 6 4 3 inning ending double play. Nice inning for Jacob Potter, and we're halfway home at Wilson's Group Stadium. Three to nothing. The Bulldogs still lead it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time. Yeah, I'm back. You're stuck with me again. I'm good, how are you? We're going to play some heads or tails. Everybody stand up. This is really easy. I'm going to toss this coin in the air. You can play tonight, Jim. Put your hand on your head or your tail. If you're the same as the coin, you're alive. If not, you sit down. This coin came from Newfoundland yesterday. So here we go. Go heads or tails. Heads, if your hand is on your tail, sit down. Jim Swanson, 0 for 1 in heads or tails. Tails, if your hand is on your head, sit down. It's not a two-headed Newfoundland coin. Tails again, if your hand is on your head, sit down. Tails, if your hand is on your head, sit down. Hey, I'm working over here. All right, uh, do you guys have anybody left over there? Couple? All right, here we go. Tails, if your hand is on your head, sit down. 
Tails again, if your hand is on your head, sit down. And we got, you got two over there? Peter, you got anybody? Nope. We got two prizes? Oh, let's give them those prizes then. All right, that is Virgin Radio's Heads or Tails. Hey, there's another zip liner, folks. You too can be zip lining out there. Brought to you by Wild Place. Get on the stop. You stay with us. Oh, man. You know I had to do it for you. You know I had to do it for you. Yeah. You know I had to do it for you. You know I had to do it for you. You know I had to do it for you. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Sometimes I laugh with God about how you can't stop me. Leading off for your Harbor Cups from Seattle University, the left fielder, number 54, Kyle Sherrod. <laughs> To the bottom of inning number five here in Victoria. 3-0, the Bulldogs still lead the Harbor Cats, and Victoria looking to get some offense going here in the bottom of the fifth. This is Kyle Sherrick at the plate. Sherrick, the left fielder, sends a fly ball foul down the left field line. It's one ball and one strike. Also a new pitcher into the game for Burnaby in this inning. It is Braden Alleman who stands at six feet, 185 pounds, out of uh, UBC. Swinging a foul tip back to the screen by Sherrick. It's one and two. Harbor Cats will send Sherrick, Spawn, and Adams to the dish here in this bottom of the fifth inning. Still sitting on just the three hits in the game. Sherrick with a fly ball out to left center field. Long run headed out towards the warning track and making the catch is Bouchard. He had a, a long way to go to get to that ball, but he did run it down, and there's one out. Now batting the third baseman from Cal Baptist, number six. So next Harrison. up is Harrison Spawn. Spawn has uh, been heating up at the plate in uh, recent games for the Harbor Cats in the West Coast League. He did take an 0 for 4 in the game on Friday night in Ridgefield, but before that he had been on a, a fairly good hot streak. In his previous six games, he had three multi-hit games. Make that, excuse me, four multi-hit games as part of a, a six-game hitting streak. So Spawn now entering a Tuesday night's game against Cowlitz will bring a 245 batting average in the West Coast League into that game along with 15 runs scored, three home runs, and 13 RBIs. And as we know, of course, Spawn plays excellent defense as well on the left side of the infield, whether it's at third or at short. He is ahead here of Alleman on the mound. Three balls, no strikes. And a fastball not close for ball four. It'll be a one-out walk issued to Harrison Spawn. Now batting the right fielder from Yellowby Junior College, number nine, <laughs> Adam. So here now is Nick Adams for Victoria. Runner at first, Harrison Spawn with one out in the bottom of the fifth inning. Griffin Paxton waits on deck. The pitch to Adams is a strike from Alleman. It's nothing in one. Well, the Bulldogs off to a good start halfway through this non-league exhibition game. Again, it's a, a good chance for them to get ready to once again represent BC at the upcoming 2019 Baseball Canada Men's National Championships in Chatham, New Brunswick from August 22nd to 25th. One and one pitch outside to Nick Adams. Two and one the count. You may recall if you uh, watched any of the championships the last few years or if you watched the Harbor Cats the last few years as well that Victoria and right here at Wilson's Group Stadium hosted the uh, Baseball Canada Men's Nationals for the last two years, but here in 2019, they are going to the opposite coast, out to uh, New Brunswick. But for the Bulldogs, they're going there to New Brunswick as the, the reigning champions looking to defend their crown. 
And games like this are certainly a good test for them. Get a, a lot of guys into the game. Get them back into the rhythm. They do play in a, a men's league in a senior men's league in, in uh, the Vancouver area. This one is a rocket out to right center field. This ball is going to get down into the gap in right center. Adams on his way to second, getting the stop sign at third is Harrison Spawn. And the Hovercats have runners at second and third, one away in the bottom of the fifth inning. And Griffin Paxton coming up to hit. Well, we're going to have a pinch hitter here for Griffin Paxton, and it'll be Liam Balance getting a chance to hit. Info booth. Info booth. Balance from uh, Vancouver Island University, native of Arrington, BC. So he will replace Paxton at first base. Balance is a, a natural first baseman. And so he steps in here with an RBI spot, trying to knock in the game's first run for the Harbor Cats. Balance takes a strike from Alleman, nothing in one. Spawn at third base, Adams at second after the double. And that also that double from Adams was uh, the fourth hit in the game for the Harbor Cats. Nothing in one pitch to balance, dips down low. It's one ball, one strike. Harbor Cats having uh, the luxury here with the non-league game for uh, Todd Haney to get a number of their recent arrivals, some innings on the mound and some playing time in the field as well. Balance with a little pop-up. This is not gonna be deep enough as back from second, Reyes makes the catch, backpedaling onto the outfield grass, and Balance is retired. So there's two down now for Gus Wilson. Wilson, another one of those recent arrivals, uh, reinforcements you could say for the Harbor Cats with a couple of their regulars departing back to their respective colleges. Wilson, in today's ball game, is one for one. Big swing and a miss there. It's no balls and one strike. It'll take now a two out base hit here from Wilson for the Harbor Cats to score a run in this inning. So they still trail three nothing. Nothing in one pitch. Gets to the backstop. Here comes Spawn and he will score. So on the wild pitch, Harrison Spawn makes it a three to one ball game. Also going to third on the play is Adams. And it's a one and one count on Gus Wilson at the plate. Here now the one and one pitch from Alleman. There's a strike on the other half of the plate. Good fastball at 88 on the radar gun. It's one and two. So despite the wild pitch and the Harper Cats getting their first run of the game to make it a three to one Burnaby lead. One good pitch away here. Alleman as he came inside. That one gets away as well. And Adams comes in to score. So a pair of wild pitches and a pair of runs in this bottom of the fifth inning. It's now three to two. And so that has to be frustrating for Alleman on the hill for Burnaby because he's now allowed two runs, both of the, the runners in scoring position to cross the plate without forcing Gus Wilson to get the bat off his shoulders with two out. There's a swing and a miss and Wilson strikes out to end the inning. Harbor Cats do score two and they trail by a run as we head on to inning number six at Wilson's Group Stadium.
build a new public safety building using provincial gaming revenue from hosting Elements Casino Victoria. The new building has larger sleeping quarters, so volunteer firefighters can be on call, on site, and respond to emergencies even faster. The building isn't only home to the town's fire department, though. It also has space for public safety staff and a secondary emergency operations center, too. BCLC, we're community-minded, with your community in mind. We were getting married in the most beautiful rural setting. My mom got sick and couldn't be with us for our big day. I was heartbroken. Thankfully, we discovered ExploreNet. They responded right away and connected us to high-speed internet. Our big day was incredible because it felt like mom was there. ExploreNet, connect to what matters. Mikey Calia on the hill for the Harbor Cats to make his season debut for Victoria. Another recent arrival from Lower Columbia College, and he fires across a first pitch strike to Ataru Yamaguchi, the DH for Burnaby this afternoon. Nothing in one pitch is hit out in the gap towards right center field. This is going to get down, and it's going to roll all the way to the wall. Yamaguchi rounding second. He is on his way for three, and he is going to be in there standing up with a leadoff triple. So Yamaguchi hit that one to the perfect place of the yard. If you're trying to get a triple here at Wilson's Group Stadium, right to, to right center field, it rolled all the way to the wall. And Yamaguchi has a three-bagger to start this sixth inning. Well, Kalia is listed at 5'11", 180 pounds, native of Kent, Washington, and he goes to uh, Lower Columbia College. Yamaguchi at third, nobody out to start this top of the sixth. Burnaby did see their 3 0 lead. Close to 3 2 in that last inning, but now they have a chance to retake a, a bigger lead in this top of the sixth inning. No balls and a strike here on Stephen Horner and a wave and a miss. It's now nothing and two. So a strikeout situation here on the mound for Kalia with. Yamaguchi at third, nobody out, and he's ahead 0-2 on Stephen Horner, looking for one more good pitch to finish him off and keep Yamaguchi over there at third base. Here's the 0-2. Strike three called, caught the outside corner, and Horner down looking for out number one. So a nice comeback there by Kalia after allowing that triple, striking out Stephen Horner on three pitches. So next up is Nolan Weger, who's already two for two in this game. Matt Clayton, by the way, is behind the plate now, taking over for Tyler Pettit. Lost that one in his feet for just a moment, but it did not get far away from the home plate area. One ball, no strikes here on Weger, who's already two for two with a couple of runs driven in. In his last at bat, he came up with the bases loaded and singled home a pair of runs. So he has two RBIs to lead the Bulldogs this afternoon. 1-0 pitch, going to miss down and away. Two balls, no strikes. Yamaguchi still over there at third base. There's now one out in the inning. Still a chance for Burnaby to score a run and, and manufacture a run without necessarily needing a, another base hit. It is now a 3-0 count on Weger. So Kalia has to be careful here with Weger swinging a hot bat to start the ball game. That crowds him inside and it misses for ball four. So it is a one-out walk 
Not the worst thing in the world, though, for Calia, because it does potentially give the Harbor Cats a chance to escape this inning with a ground ball. Potential for the double play now in order. Matthew Reyes now will step in, the second baseman for Burnaby. He is 0 for 1 with a strikeout and a walk in his two plate appearances this afternoon. Foul ball down the right field line as it lands on the warning track in front of uh, the seats down there towards the Harbor Cats bullpen. No balls, one strike. Yamaguchi at third, Uyghur at first, one away in this top of inning number six. Three to two, the Bulldogs lead the Harbor Cats, looking to make it a bigger lead if Reyes can come through here and knock in Yamaguchi from third. Last pitch from Kalia missed down and away. One ball, one strike. And here now the 1-1 one -one pitch is downstairs again, missing for two and one. Chopper towards third base. This one will go foul. And it's now a two and two count. Did not look like Yamaguchi was going to try to score on that ball, even if it did stay in fair territory. But it, it wound up going foul after bouncing a couple of times in fair territory. Two balls and two strikes the count. Runners at first and third with one out in the top of the sixth. Here's the pitch from Kalia, and it's down low in the dirt. Well blocked by Clayton, but it's a full count now, three and two. Here now the payoff pitch. Runner goes for second. It's going to be a foul off the bat of Reyes remains three and two. So Burnaby getting a, a little aggressive at least on the base pass there. It was a good count to run in, three and two with one out. That way if Reyes did put one on the ground, you'd probably stay out of the double play and it would allow Yamaguchi to score from third base. We'll see here if Uyghur is gonna be running again. Another three, two, he is running again. This one's driven in the air, deep left field and it is gone. Off the bottom of the scoreboard in left field, a three-run home run for Matthew Reyes. And that restores a bigger lead for the Bulldogs. It's six to two. So right after the Harbor Cats cut into the deficit in the last inning, Matthew Reyes unloads on that last 3-2 pitch and drives it over the wall in left to make it a 6-2 lead for Burnaby once again. And there's still just one out in the inning. Now the base is clear for Mikey Cali as he will pitch to Trevor Fonseca, the right fielder. Fonseca in this afternoon's ball game is 0 for 1, but he did drive in a run with a sacrifice fly in his last plate appearance, so he has an RBI to his name. One and one pitch, now to Fonseca is a wave and a miss, it's one and two. One ball, two strikes. And the pitch from Kalia is a foul ball. Remains one and two. Down the left field line, well back out of play foul. Still one and two, couple of fouls in a row now from Fonseca to stay alive. Bases are empty with one out in the top of the sixth inning. Three runs home for Burnaby. 
All their runs have come in two innings in this game. They've scored three runs in the top of the fourth and the top of the sixth. This one is hit to Tanner Haney at second, and Fonseca retired for the second right. out. Change up in. Back to the top of the order now for Burnaby and Jeff Bouchard, the center fielder, stepping in. Took the first pitch for a ball, 1-0 and oh the count. Bouchard is 2 for 3. Got underneath this one, out to shallow center field. It's going to be taken care of by the second baseman, Tanner Haney. And that is the inning. Matthew Reyes with the big swing of the bat in the top of the sixth. A three-run shot makes it 6-2 to two Burnaby over the Harbor Cats as we go to the bottom half of inning number six. Mm, this is so good. Let me show you why. Our growers, they select the beans. Not as easy as it seems. This one's perfect, that one too. So many great beans to brew. Premium Arabica. Ship them off to Canada. Arrive at our roastery. Sorting, roasting every bean. Taste test each cup. Coffee masters give thumbs up. Handcraft fresh brew. Spread and joy is what we do. From bean to cup, that is how we brew it up. Cool. I make the donuts. Here at Wilson's Group Stadium this Tuesday to kick off a three game midweek series against the Cowlitz Black Bears. First pitch on Tuesday and Wednesday at 6 35. Well, Thursday's business person getaway game is scheduled for 1 o'clock. Stop by the Harvard Cats office or go online to secure your seats now. To the bottom half of inning number six, Harper Cats now trail by four runs after they cut a 3-0 deficit to 3-2. The Bulldogs right back on the board in the top of the sixth inning with a three-run home run by Matthew Reyes to make it a 6-2 lead. So Harper Cats have work to do to get back in the game once again here in this bottom of the sixth inning. Burnaby now out hitting the Harbor Cats 9-4 to, to start the, uh, the ball game. They have shown up and they've played well to this point. Harbor Cats, again, with uh, some work to do. They, they didn't have a hit until the third inning in the ball game. And they only have just four now here in the bottom of the sixth. Alleman's pitch misses outside. One ball, one strike here on Ty Schindel. Harbor Cats do have the top of the order up in the bottom of the sixth inning. So this is the uh, the right spot for them to try to string some good at bats together. Wave and a miss by Schindel. It's one and two. Well, even though this is a non-league exhibition game, we uh, are right around the midway point of the second half of the uh, West Coast League season, and both division races are starting to heat up. Harbor Cats will be back back in action on Tuesday in the West Coast League, despite a, a three-day break from Saturday to Monday. Two and two count now on Schindel. That uh, Tuesday game against the Cowlitz Black Bears here at Wilson's Group Stadium. You can watch it on Shaw Spotlight once again, as well as go live broadcasts. There's a wave and a miss. Tag applied on Schindel. He strikes out and becomes out number one of the bottom of the sixth. Now, what's interesting is that entering play today, both the Harbor Cats and Corvallis Knights, who won their respective divisions in the first half and punched their tickets to the postseason, but both teams are leading their divisions once again by half a game to start the second half. Harbor Cats at 10-5, narrowly 
edging out the uh, Wenatchee Apple Sox, who are 10 and 6 in the north. And the Knights are 9 and 3, just half a game up on the Cowlitz Black Bears, who again will play Victoria early next week. And uh, Cowlitz comes in to play here this afternoon at 9 and 4. There is a strike on Tanner Haney. Quickly nothing in two as Alleman is ahead here into his second inning of relief. So the pressure, of course, is off for both the Harbor Cats and the Knights, but they are off each of them to good starts to the second half, leading their divisions once again. But when you look at the, the Black Bears, who will come to town on Tuesday, the pressure is certainly on them to try to win the division in the second half and punch their ticket to the postseason. That is strike three called on Tanner Haney. And he is down looking for the second out in the bottom of the sixth. The designated hitter from Cal Baptist, so just back to the uh, the standings and the, the playoff picture. Now, if the Harbor Cats and the Knights were to win their division crowns again in the second half, then the second playoff spot in uh, each of their respective divisions would go to the best overall season long record or the second best record after uh, the Harbor Cats or the Knights. So that's kind of what makes the division races at this point in the season so interesting is that there are really two races to keep an eye on. First and foremost, the second half division races to see who wins the second half crown. But if the same team who won the first half wins the second half as well, then you also have to keep an eye on the overall season standings. Now in the South Division, the Walla Walla Suites are 22 and 17 overall on the season, and they have a good grip on that record considering that everyone else in the South is below 500 overall on the season. So for Cal, it's back to them and the meet, the, uh, the significance, I should say, of, of the game, uh, the three game series next week is that they're below 500 overall, but they're nine and four on the second half. So the best way for Cal, to get in is to beat out Corvallis and try to win the second half. Nick Playa, they say he went around on the swing. We'll finish that uh, conversation on the division picture in the next inning as we go to the top of the seventh, six to two, Burnaby in front. All right, fans, it is trouble ball time. Brought to you by Good Life Fitness. Today we have a father-son combo, I believe. On your mark, get set, go. That's what it's called dad taking Junior out to the woodshed. <laughs> All right, got to keep them off the field, though. And there's your winner. Great job, guys. Again, the Good Life Fitness of Mobile Ball is brought to you by Good Life Fitness. Thanks to our commissioners for providing security for all Victoria Harbor County teams. Commissioners trusted every day, everywhere. Safeguarding community.
We've reached inning number seven here at Wilson's Group Stadium, six to two, the lead for Burnaby over Victoria, and a new pitcher on for the Harbor Cats here is Regan McDonald, the big left-hander out of Dallas Baptist. Standing at 6'9", he is 0-1 with a 5.55 ERA on the West Coast League season in four appearances and two starts. There's a swing and a miss. This is also a, a pinch hitter on for the Bulldogs. It'll be Jordan Rogers stepping in here to pinch hit for Burnaby to start out the top of the seventh. There's a swing and a miss. Once again, it's one and two. Now overall on the season, McDonald has allowed 13 hits and six walks in 11 and a third innings of work along with 12 strikeouts. And that is strike three called. Good fastball at 88 from McDonald and there's one away. So Rogers is retired and next up is Braden Monroe. Rogers, by the way, hitting for Brendan Gaunt, the starting third baseman. So Gaunt will be uh, done for the day. This afternoon, Monroe is one for three as he fouls one back to the screen. Aside from the base hit, he struck out in his other two at bats. One ball and one strike. And here comes the 1 1 pitch from McDonald. That'll miss down low. Two balls and one strike now. Well, a decent crowd here at the park on this Sunday afternoon. 1,907, the uh, attendance figure here for the Bulldogs and the Harbor Cats. 2-1 pitch, misses up and in, and it's now 3-1. and one. It is a, a good crowd, especially considering the fact that it is a, a non-league game, but Burnaby is a, a popular draw. Of course, many of the fans here will have seen Burnaby win the uh, men's national championship a year ago, right here at, at this ballpark. There's a walk issued to Braden Monroe, so he's down there at first now. One on, one out for Burnaby. They're looking to add to their six to two lead here in the top of the seventh inning. Another pinch hitter here for Burnaby as well as he takes a strike. It's McGregor Sharp who will step in to hit. So we'll assume that Sharp will also take over behind home plate for the starting catcher, Brody Hawkins. Hawkins went one for three with a run and a strikeout in his uh, three at bats. So Sharp takes over for him and takes us. Uh, check that. That was a ball from McDonald for two balls and no strikes. Missing in tight. Now three and one the count. Small lead off of first for Monroe. Does not appear to be a big threat to steal. This one, though, is in the right field for a base hit by Sharp. Going first to third is Monroe, and the Bulldogs have runners at the corners with one out. So Sharp comes off the bench and delivers a pinch hit base hit. And this turns... Uh, he had bat into an RBI spot for Ataru Yamaguchi. Runner at third, less than two outs. 6-2 the lead for Burnaby, chance to make it even bigger. And Yamaguchi is coming off of a triple in his last at bat. He's two for three with a couple of runs scored this afternoon. That one misses from Regan McDonald, one ball, no strikes. And there's a strike 
It's now one and one. Monroe at third. And Sharp at first. One away in the top of the seventh inning. Now in the double digits in the hit column for Burnaby with 10 hits on the day. There's a swing and a miss. One and two, the count to Yamaguchi. McDonald looking for a strikeout or a ground ball here to try to keep the Bulldogs off the board in this seventh inning. Again, all of Burnaby's runs, their six runs have come in two innings where they scored three runs apiece. Top of the fourth and top of the sixth. There's a wave and a miss. And Clayton did uh, not hold on to it, but Yamaguchi did not try to run, of course, with the runner already at first. So it's a strikeout for Regan McDonald, and that's out number two. So it'll need to be a two-out base hit here from Stephen Horner to get something out of the inning for Burnaby as he takes a first pitch strike. 87 on the fastball from Regan McDonald. Horner on the afternoon is 0 for 2. Did walk and score a run. Now the 0-1 pitch from McDonald downstairs. Good block by Clayton. It's one ball and one strike. Here's the one and one pitch. And a swing and a miss. Got the fastball at 88 by Horner. It's now one and two. Well located also on the outer half of the plate from Regan McDonald. So one ball, two strikes, two out. Runners at first and third for the Bulldogs. And McDonald one good pitch away from escaping this inning without any damage. One, two. Breaking ball dips down low. It's now two balls and two strikes. That was a good two-strike pitch, though, from McDonald. And Horner with uh, an equally good take, not to chase it. Even count now, two and two. And time called at home plate before the pitch as Horner asked for a little extra time. Corner now set in the batter's box and time called again as McDonald steps off the rubber. Back to uh, first base. Goes Sharp, who is just getting a little bit too big of a lead for McDonald's liking. He's now set. Here's the 2-2 and a throw over to check on the runner. Fans back into it. Here's the 2-2. Fastball down and in. It's full 3-2. and two. So that will give Sharp a chance to break on the pitch from first base with a 3-2 and two count, two outs. Of course, with no base runner at second, Monroe cannot break from third. But here is the payoff pitch. High fastball misses. It's ball four, and that'll load the bases with two away. So a nice at bat for Horner. Nice uh, patience up there, and he takes his walk. So that'll bring in the shortstop, Nolan Weger, who has already had a productive day at the plate. He is two for two with a couple of runs driven in, a run scored, and a walk. Oh, the sprinklers are on here at the ballpark, and that might cause a little bit of a delay. It's only in left field. There are the sprinklers going. Gus Wilson at short. Well, this is getting a little wet. Also, Kyle Sherrick in left field. Well, a malfunction with the sprinklers. So they'll try to get that sorted as, uh, as soon as possible. You see it. It's not all that uncommon to be honest where whether it's at a baseball game or a football game anything with a field with sprinklers it happens more than you, th you would think where the, the sprinklers just come on at uh, the wrong time during the game
still going out there in, uh, in left field. It's only the left field portion of the sprinklers in center field and in right field. They are not on as well as uh, on the infield. Well, while we have this delay here with the uh, the sprinklers on, it's a good chance for uh, me to get, or for myself, excuse me, to get back into the uh, the division race in both the South and North Division that uh, I brought up to start the last inning. Now, I mentioned that that Corvallis has a half-game lead on the Cowlitz Black Bears in the South in the second half, but Cowlitz is actually 19 and 21 on the season in the second half. So or uh, on the season overall, I should say. So their best bet to try to make the playoffs is to try to win the second half because if they are going to try to, to have the second best overall record, if the Corvallis Knights were to win the division again in the second half, they have uh, some, uh, some gr ground to gain on the Walla Walla Suites because Walla Walla is 22-17. and 17. They had a very good first half. Cowlitz did not have a good first half. But it's kind of flipped in the second half because Walla Walla has not been great and Cowlitz has been quite hot to start the second half. So the uh, division races are starting to heat up. That's the South Division. In the North Division, looking at the overall standings, Wenatchee and Bellingham are just a game apart. And that is really quite surprising considering the great first half that Bellingham had and the poor first half that the Apple Sox had. But when you look at Bellingham off to a three and nine start to the second half, it really has opened the door for another team to not only try to win the second half division crown over the Harbor Cats, but also it's opened the door for someone to catch Bellingham in terms of the overall second best record in the division. So that if the Harbor Cats win the division again in the second half, which they're currently leading, it would mean that either probably it would looks it's looks like looking like excuse me at the moment like Wenatchee or Bellingham are going to be one of the two teams with that second best record in the North Division so it'll be interesting to see how the end of the season unfolds and which two teams one in the south one in the north will join the Harbor Cats and the Corvallis Knights in the postseason Sprinklers are still going, so we'll see if uh, someone, a member of the Harbor Cats grounds crew here at Wilson's Group Stadium, can uh, get over to the uh, the sprinklers. And oh, now they they're off. All right, so someone has gotten to the flick the switch, get those sprinklers off. Oh, and now they're back on, and now they're off again. Well, we'll see. Something to keep an eye on out there in left field. I think the players might be a little hesitant to uh, go back to their normal positions. This is the first time I've seen that happen at Wilson's Group Stadium in the uh, last three years that I've been in and around the team here with the Harbor Cats. So even though it is something where you, you, you see it from now and again at other ballparks and stadiums across North America, but First time I've seen it happen here at Wilson's Group Stadium. They're going to give Regan McDonald a couple of warm-up pitches here now that we're getting back going in the top of the seventh inning. When we do resume the inning, it'll be the bases loaded and two outs with the shortstop, Nolan Weger at the plate. And now the first pitch to Uyghur is a strike. Check that. It was actually the second pitch of the at-bat. It was a 1-0 count when the sprinklers went on. So it's now 1-1 one one with that strike from McDonald. Swing and a miss. And it's 1-2. So perhaps that little break may have given McDonald a chance to re-energize himself. Good life on that fastball at 88. And the fans are into the game once again. Bases loaded. Two out. One ball, two strikes, and the pitch is hit in the air down the right field line. This ball is going to get down. That's a fair ball as Adams tries to get it back in. It's going to score two runs into second. Goes Weger with a double, and it's now 8-2, to two, Burnaby.
And Weger comes through. He drives in two more. He has now four RBIs on the ball game with a two-run single and now a two-run double. And so now Weger is at second base and at third base is Horner. Ground ball towards third. It is scooped up there by Spawn. The throw is in time at first and that'll be the inning. Two more runs score for the Bulldogs. It's an eight to two lead as we go to the seventh inning stretch. Out of the seventh inning stretch, we go to the bottom of the seventh, and it's now an eight to two lead for the Burnaby Bulldogs over the Victoria Harbor Cats. Nolan Weger has been a one-man wrecking crew in this game for Burnaby. Another two RBI base hit, actually was a double in the last inning after his two-run single earlier in the ball game. This is Tyler Pettit at the plate for the Harbor Cats, taking one in tight, almost hit him. One ball, one strike. Also a new pitcher on the hill for Burnaby in this bottom of the seventh inning. It is Dylan Remke who stands at 6'1", 230 pounds. Langley, BC native from the uh, Prairie Baseball Academy. Even count here on Pettit, one ball, one strike. Swing and a foul tip held on to by the catcher McGregor Sharp, and it's one and two. Foul tip back to the screen. Still one and two the count. Pettit leading off this bottom of the seventh inning. Harbor Cats trail now by the six runs, and they're starting to run out of time to try to come back from this deficit here this afternoon, although of course in a non-league exhibition game, the scoreline is not the uh, biggest of the Harbor Cats concerns. One and two pitch up high, it's now two and two. Bulldogs though, definitely would have wanted to, to come here into Victoria and play 
as well as they have played here this afternoon, get some momentum going before they go to Chatham, New Brunswick for the 2019 Baseball Canada Men's National Championship. Pettit pops one up on the infield from first base, Monroe comes in to make the catch and there's one down. So Pettit retired. He now is 0 for 2 along with the walk so far. Next up is Matt Clayton who is 0 for 2. We we'll also uh, have some news to tell you from the world of Major League Baseball and the Toronto Blue Jays hearing that Marcus Stroman has been traded to the New York Mets so for a uh, Canadian baseball fans or fans of the Blue Jays. That'll be uh, noteworthy news. That is just being reported by uh, Sportsnet and TSN, so it's not official yet. We'll see what the return is. That has not been announced, but nearing the Major League Baseball trade deadline coming up. And Stroman, we knew that there was a good chance he'd be on the move, and it sounds like he is. We'll be going to the Mets. Mets, of course, are in a, an interesting situation with uh, them probably out of the, the wild card race for this season. But this is not, I do not think, a, a typical, you know, move that a, a buyer makes to try to, to win now. Mets, I think, are thinking more long term here with a trade for Stroman where they would re-sign him, not allow him to become a free agent, but instead re-sign him. And, and Stroman would be a part of the Mets rotation for a number of years to come where they hope to be more in contention for a playoff spot than they are this year. Three and one pitch downstairs and it's now ball four to Clayton. He takes a walk and one on and one out for the Humber Cats. For the Blue Jays though it was always a question of whether they would try to re-sign Stroman or if they would move him to get some more prospects to add to their young group of prospects that they already have and it looks like that uh, the Jays have elected to keep trying to, to restock that prospect pool and get as much young talent in the organization as they can. Clayton running for second. The throw down is going to beat him to the bag, and he is out. There was a pitch, pitch that just got a little bit away from the catcher sharp, but not far enough for Clayton to take second. So he is out after the walk, and there are two, out, uh, two outs now in the bottom of the seventh. This is Kyle Sherrick, by the way, at the plate, who is 0 for 2 with a strikeout so far in the ball game. One and 0 pitch to Sherrick. Skied on the infield right around the pitcher's mound. It's going to be the shortstop. Weger making the catch, and that's the inning. So a nice quick frame for Remke. And on we go to inning number eight here at Wilson's Group Stadium. Eight to two, Burnaby still in front. All right, fans, it is time for the Flying Squirrel Dizzy Bat Contest. Today we have Beckett and Andrew. Very simply, they're going to put their heads down. They're going to spin around at ten times. And then they're going to run out and high five Peter. All right, gentlemen, heads down on your marks. Get set, go.
Oh, this isn't over. I'm still a believer. Now pitching for your Harbor Caps from San Diego, Christian number seven, Zach Swanson. Leading off for the Bulldogs, Dorian Fielder number 36, Trevor Poncella. Eighth inning rolls in here at Wilson's Group Stadium. Eight to two, the lead for Burnaby over Victoria here in this non-league exhibition game for the Victoria Harbor Cats. Three-day break from the West Coast League. And Zach Swanson is the new pitcher on the mound for Victoria in this inning. Standing at 5'11 from San Diego Christian. Swanson getting a chance to throw here in uh, the non-league game. He's also, of course, the son of uh, Harbor Cats managing partner Jim Swanson. This one is driven deep but foul down the right field line. It's two balls and one strike. I know from uh, from talking to Jim, always a proud moment whenever he gets a chance to see Zach pitch in Harbor Cat colors. Swanson coming off his freshman season at San Diego Christian where he went originally as a, a two-way player for the uh, San Diego Christian Hawks but was told when he, he got there by the coaching staff that they wanted him to focus on pitching full-time, so that's what he's done. Three balls and a strike. That'll miss up high for ball four. Lead off walk to Fonseca, issued by Zach Swanson to start out the top of the eighth. So back to the top of the order now for Burnaby. We're going to have another pinch hitter. And the pinch hitter is going to be John Thomas, who will step in to hit for Jeff Bouchard, starting center fielder for this afternoon's ball game. Two balls and no strikes. Swanson still trying to get in and around that strike zone since coming in from the bullpen. That one not close. It's 3-0. and well, It was a good day at the plate for Bouchard to top the order. Two for four day. There is a strike to Thomas. It's now 3-1. and one. Looked like Thomas was taking all the way that time. Three balls and one strike. That is strike two. So from 3-0 down to a full count, three and two now to Thomas. Swinging a foul back. Runner was breaking for second as well, Fonseca, but forced to go back to first with that foul ball. Still a three and two count. Runner at first, nobody out, top of the eighth, eighth inning, six run lead, there goes the runner again, and another foul away. Three balls, two strikes, runner goes. That is ball four. Shot, so no throw down from Matt Clayton with Thomas taking the walk, pushing Fonseca up to second base anyway. So in the end, Thomas does uh, win the battle there with Swanson and draws another walk for the Bulldogs to start out this top of the eighth inning. Two on, nobody out. And here is uh, Jordan Rogers. Took ball one from Swanson, one ball, no strikes. Rogers came in defensively to replace the starting third baseman, Brendan Gaunt, and he has stayed in the game. This is his second at bat. One ball, one strike. And there is a strike, it's one and two.
Swing and a miss, and it's a punch out for Swanson as he got Rogers to chase maybe off the plate outside. It's now one away in the inning. And a important note there for Swanson too to keep the runners at first and second stationary where they are. So that brings in the first baseman, Braden Monroe for Burnaby. Fastball missing down and in. One ball and no strikes. Well, again, let's take a look ahead at what comes next for the Harvard Cats with the, uh, them having a day off yesterday and as well tomorrow as part of a three-day West Coast League break. Swanson missed for two balls and no strikes to Monroe. But they'll use the day off yesterday to get set to welcome the Cowlitz Black Bears on Tuesday for a three-game midweek series, Tuesday to Thursday. It will be the Black Bears' first visit to Victoria and Wilson's Group Stadium since 2017 after the Black Bears uh, did not visit last year. The Harbor Cats went to, to uh, Cowlitz to play three games there against the South Div uh, Division opponents. Monroe takes a walk here to load the bases with one out. And that'll bring in the catcher, McGregor Sharp, for his second at bat after he came in to replace the starting catcher, Brody Hawkins. Nothing and nothing pitch upstairs for one ball and no strikes. Now just to, to finish off that point on the now upcoming schedule for the Harbor Cats, they'll play the, the Black Bears here at Wilson's Group Stadium for the first time in two years. And again, just to reiterate what I was talking about in the last couple of innings, the Black Bears have been playing good ball of late. They're 9-4 and four to start the second half and just half a game back of the division-leading Corvallis Knights entering play today. So those will be three big games for Cowlitz next week as they try to track down Corvallis. Swanson in the strike zone on that last pitch to Sharp. It's now 2-1. and one. And then after the conclusion of that series on Thursday, the Harbor Cats will start a six-game road trip where they go to Bellingham for three over the weekend and then Port Angeles the following week before they play three more against the lefties here at Wilson's Group Stadium to close out their regular season. There's another strike by Swanson. It's a full count, three and two. Fonseca at third, Thomas at second, and Monroe at first. The three and two pitch is just up high, and that's ball four to walk in a run as Sharp takes the uh, bases loaded walk to score Fonseca. So all the uh, base runners move up station to station as Monroe goes to second and Thomas to third. Sharp now at first, and it's a nine to two lead for the Bulldogs now in the top of the eighth inning. Swanson, I think he's missing up high with that fastball, just trying to get that fastball down a little bit more into the, the strike zone and into the bottom edge of the zone. Swinging a foul back, one ball, one strike. Brittany Schindel, you want to give certificates to Mr. Mike, has the end of to claim your prize. One ball and one strike. Yamaguchi takes a strike, it's one and two. So Swanson ahead here. Yamaguchi this afternoon, two for four, a couple of runs scored, including a uh, triple. Swanson missing down low this time, two and two. Swing and a miss, and Yamaguchi behind on that fastball from Swanson, there's two down. So a big punch up for Swanson to keep the bases loaded and keep them where they are on the base pass. Now batting left fielder number 13, and now any out will do for him as he will face Steven Horner, the left fielder, trying to retire him to get out of this inning with just the one run coming in to score. 
Horner got underneath it on the first pitch, but it's back behind home plate and foul landing on the roof of the overhang here in the uh, home plate grandstand. No balls and a strike to Horner. Fastball up and outside at 81 on that radar gun. It's one ball and one strike. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch. Yanked to third and it's caught by Harrison Spawn to get Zach Swanson out of the inning. One run does score, but Swanson limits the damage and it's 9-2. to two. Burnaby on top as we go to the bottom of the eighth. to the bottom of inning number eight. Harbor Cats with the 9-2 deficit against the Burnaby Bulldogs. So Victoria will need a big rally here in the bottom of the eighth and the bottom of the ninth to uh, try to come back from this. But as I alluded to in the, the last inning, of course in a non-league exhibition game, the score line is not the biggest concern. Harrison Spawn with a hard line out to right field as Fonseca got back over to it to make the catch. Fonseca was actually playing pretty shallow in right field and Spawn gave that one a decent ride out to deep right. But it hung up nicely for Fonseca in right field so he made the catch for the first out. So Spawn, Adams and then Balance to hit for Victoria in this sitting. Here is Nick Adams taking a breaking ball that misses uh, on the outside part of the plate. One ball, no strikes. Adams started his swing, but held up and took a strike. So it's one ball and one strike. Now the count. Base is empty, one away, bottom of the eighth inning. Harbor Cats have not had much in the way of offense. In fact, both of their two runs scored on wild pitches. Congratulations, Rick Green. Burnaby, meanwhile, has kind of chipped away on the scoreboard. Three runs in the top of the fourth inning, three more in the top of the sixth, and then two in the top of the seventh, and one in the top of the eighth. Oh, and two pitch is a cut and a miss by Adams. No, check that, it's a foul. Just got a little piece of it around home plate, so it's still nothing in two. New pitcher, by the way, on for Burnaby in this inning is Brogan McDougal, 6'2", 185 pounds from White Rock, B.C. and Douglas College. And the 0-2 from McDougal is 
very close, but just missing on that breaking ball that tried to come back to the inside corner. It's one and two. Now one and two pitch. That one well inside. It's two and two. Well, McDougal poses a bit of a different look out there on the mound for the Harbor Cats hitters to contend with, with that kind of sidearm, almost a, a submarine delivery. There is a swing and a miss by Adams, and it's going to be strike three for the second out in the inning. Now batting, the first baseman from Vancouver Island University, number 39, Liam Ballas. So base is empty, two gone in the bottom of the eighth inning. Liam Balance steps in, and this one is punched out in the air to right center field. This will get down for a base hit, and Balance yeah. has himself a single to keep the inning going and uh, avoid the Harbor Cats being retired in order. So Balance is aboard for his first time today. He's one for two since he came in defensively to replace Griffin Paxton at first base. Gus Wilson now will step in. He also is one for two. Base hit in his first at bat and then struck out his last time. Big breaking ball in for a strike at 75 from McDougal. And it's nothing in one. At base hit by balance, just the fifth hit in the game for Victoria this afternoon. It's been a well-pitched game, whoever has been in the game for Burnaby, and that's uh, certainly a good sign. Bodes well for them heading towards the men's national tournament at the end of August in New Brunswick. One and one pitch to Wilson is a strike. 74 that time on the curve ball. It's one and two. Alex Webb started the game for Burnaby, went three very good innings. Bobby. Then Jacob Mahone, Braden Alleman, Dylan Remke and now McDougal all doing a nice job on the mound. This one hit on the ground to short, flipping it to second is Weger, and that'll end the inning. So Balance does come up with a two out base hit, but that's all for the Harbor Cats in the bottom of the eighth. And on we go to inning number nine. It is nine to two, Burnaby. You guys sound like you want to sing in the sunshine. Let's hear you guys out there. chance and I need you to get so loud that they can hear you all the way over in Burnaby. All right, let them know where the Bulldogs are today. Loud as you can get, Victoria. Leading 
up for the Bulldogs, the shortstop, number one. On we go to inning number nine, and the new pitcher on for the Harbor Cats here in the ninth is Nick Playa getting a chance to uh, throw an inning here. He also threw uh, one inning in a non-league game last year, and if my memory serves me correctly, I think he did pretty well in that inning. Playa is a guy who, if you know him, he, he's a guy who loves to have fun, and this is going to be a fun opportunity for him to get out on the mound. I'm sure he's going to be smiling the whole way with a, a grin on his face. There's a swing and a miss, and it's one ball and one strike. Nolan Weger at the plate, leading off the inning for Burnaby. Another swing and a miss. It's one and two. That one an 84 mile per hour fastball from Playa. For the Bulldogs, it'll be Uyghur, then Reyes and Fonseca at the plate in this top of the ninth. This one is driven in the air but foul down the left field line. One ball, two strikes, still the count. Well, Playa may be auditioning here for uh, the chance to pitch when uh, if the Harbor Cats need uh, an extra arm, perhaps late in the season when their numbers are a little short. In that regard, this is going to get over the head of Gus Wilson at short and down for a base hit. So Playa allows a, uh, a base knock to Nolan Weger to start out the top of the ninth. Fastball downstairs that missed to Matt Reyes to start this at bat. One ball, no strikes. Now Reyes had a uh, big hit in the ball game. One of the uh, the big hits for Burnaby. Three run home run that came back in the top of the sixth inning. This is on the ground. Chance for two. They're just going to get one as the throw from Gus Wilson at short was a little offline to Tanner Haney. So Haney could not turn it towards first base. But Playa does get an out. He gets the lead man at second base. Mentioned that Reyes had that three run home run. The Bulldogs scored three runs in each of the fourth and sixth innings. Since then, they've added three more, two in the seventh, one in the eighth, to have a nine to two lead. There is a good fastball at 84 in for a strike. This is Trevor Fonseca, the right fielder, who today is 0 for 2, does have a run in an RBI on a sack fly, as well as a walk on his line. Playa missed with that last pitch, so it's one ball, one strike, and one on and one out for Burnaby in the top of the ninth inning. One more chance for them to try to add to this 9-2 to lead, see if they can reach double digits on the scoreboard. Playa looks in to his catcher, Matt Clayton, for the signs. And he now sets for the one-two pitch to Fonseca. That fastball misses up and outside of the zone. So it's now a two and two count. This one is driven in the air to deep right field. Turning, looking up, and watching it go is Nick Adams, and that's a two-run home run for Trevor Fonseca. And it's 11-2 Burnaby. So this season debut on the mound for Nick Playa, not going quite according to plan, but I'm sure he's still having some fun out there as he uh, looks into the Harbor Cats dugout. I'm sure he'll be giving a, or he'll be, be given a hard time about serving up that home run bowl. There's one out in the top of the ninth inning. Base is now empty and back to the top of the order go the Bulldogs with John Thomas at the plate. He takes one up high at 85 on that last fastball from Playa for one ball and no strikes.
Thomas came in to uh, pinch hit as this one is flown in the air out to right field. It's playable for Adams who comes in a couple steps, makes the catch and there's two down. But uh, Thomas entered the game for Jeff Bouchard in center field who started the ball game and this was his second plate appearance, just flew out, but in his first plate appearance drew a walk. This will be now uh, Jordan Rogers, who is 0 for 1, struck out in his lone at bat since he came into the game. A lot of defensive replacements and pinch hitters, substitutions on both sides for uh, this non-league game. So two down now in this top of the ninth inning. One ball and no strikes on Rogers. And Playa's 1-0 delivery is a wave and a miss. It's 1-1. One one. One and one pitch is hit hard right back towards the mound. Almost took Playa's head off. That's the one thing you want to be careful with, of course. It's I'm sure a fun opportunity for Playa to pitch, but you don't want to see him get hurt or with a comebacker at all. There's a base hit there for Thomas, or make that a Rogers, excuse me. So he is one for two. Now Braden Monroe will step in once again. He is one for three, a couple of walks, and a run scored. Also two strikeouts on the line for Monroe, the first baseman for Burnaby as he takes outside. One ball and no strikes. What a no pitch. High fastball, it's two balls and no strikes now. <laughs> this one is yanked in the air to deep right field. It's over the head of Adams and will roll all the way to the wall. Rogers goes to third, he will stop there. And there are runners at second and third now for Burnaby. Hey, no with two man. away. Don't strain your neck. So that'll bring in McGregor Sharp. There's his first pitch strike. Sharp was uh, another one of the defensive replacements for Burnaby midway through the game after the starting catcher Brody Hawkins was lifted. High fastball missing for one ball and one strike. That was clocked at 85 on the gun. Sharp has reached base in each of his two appearances uh, at the plate with a hit, a run, an RBI, and a walk so far. <laughs> two balls, one strike, two runners in scoring position, and two out in the top of the ninth inning. Two one pitch is a wave and a miss, it's now two and two. So Playa needing one more good pitch to get through the ninth inning. Two runs have scored on that two-run home run. Fans get into it. The 2-2. Two -two. Outside, it's now 3-2. Playa does have first base open if he wants to use it. So he's not directly uh, pressured here to come into the zone to McGregor Sharp with those two runners out there in scoring position. Three and two pitch is popped out of play foul. Remains a three and two count. Jordan Rogers at third, Braden Monroe at second. Two gone in the top of the ninth inning. And another payoff pitch coming up from Playa to McGregor Sharp. Down the right field line, this ball will tail foul, and it will be another three and two pitch. Still three and two. Here's another payoff from Nick Playa. 
Popped up on the infield. Playa is going to give way to Liam Ballance, who makes the catch, and that is the inning. On we go to the bottom of the ninth. Harbor Cats with the big deficit, 11-2. That, uh, that we have at the ballpark is now on uh, the uh, uh, the store website as well. And we do uh, have a U.S. link as well. Um, we don't have as many items for sale with the U.S. link, but they're uh, our customers or fans. Uh, Top of the order up for the Harbor Cats as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. And a new pitcher on for Burnaby. It's Alex Gibbons looking to record the final three outs and seal off a 11-2 victory for the Bulldogs here in this non-league exhibition game with the Harbor Cats. Gibbons misses outside. One ball, no strikes the count on Ty Schindel. Harbor Cats will send Schindel, Haney, and then Playa to the plate, although we might have a pinch hitter for Nick Playa after he just pitched the top of the ninth. There was a strike to Schindel. It's now 1-1. One and one. Pop up towards foul ground. This one is going to be tracked down at third base by Rogers, and that is out number one here in the bottom of the ninth. Well, a chance to look at the out of town scoreboard here on this Sunday afternoon around the West Coast League. Harbor Cats with the, uh, the break from West Coast League play, but we can tell you that the Bellingham Bells have a 7 to 4 lead on the Port Angeles Lefties in the top of the ninth inning. That game also started at 1 p.m. here in. Uh, the Pacific time zone. This is Tanner Haney at the plate, taking ball one from Gibbons. Also underway in the top of the second inning, the Walla Walla Sweets lead the Cowlitz Black Bears by a score of three to one. So Cowlitz hoping to uh, win that one with Walla Walla and come to Victoria on a good note. This one is going to be bobbled at third base and reaching safe. are going to have a pinch hitter here for Victoria. All fastballs, let's go. Bouncing ball to short, another one bobbled, and another chance for a Harbor Cats base runner. This pinch hitter, by the way, wearing number 19. There is uh, no current number 19 on the roster as Aaron Celestino, who previously wore that number, has uh, reached his in innings limit. And so he, is, uh, he has gone back to, uh, to school to get set for his college season. So, again, the identity of that uh, base runner now at first, unknown. First and second, one out. That'll come inside and hit Tyler Pettit. So the bases are now full with one away. Chance for the Harbor Cats maybe to get a couple more runs on the board in this ninth inning. 
Now back to the out of town scoreboard. So the two games currently underway, or uh, in in progress, I should say. Bellingham seven to four up on Port Angeles in the ninth. Walla Walla three one up on court on Cowlitz in the second. There are also three more games yet to get started here on this Sunday. At 5.05, the Bend Elks will host the Corvallis Knights. At 6.05, the Ridgefield Raptors play down in uh, Yakima Valley against the Pippins. And then at 6.35 in Wenatchee, the Apple Sox will host the Portland Pickles. So there's a look at the out-of-town scoreboard on this Sunday afternoon. Again, the Harbor Cats had played more games than a number of teams in the West Coast League. So the uh, rest of the, the league getting to catch up games played wise to the Harbor Cats with Victoria off for the three days. This is Matt Clayton at the plate with the bases loaded. Clayton sends a high fly ball out to straightaway center field. Thomas going back on it. He reaches up and makes the catch. Tagging from third and coming in to score is Tanner Haney. And it's a 10 to three Burnaby lead. So Victoria does get a run out of this bottom of the ninth. It's now 11 to three, and there's two away. Kyle Sherrick steps in. Ground ball to second base, and everyone is safe. Now it's thrown away. Into scores another run for the Harbor Cats. Going to third on the play is Pettit. And it's now 11 to 4. That is Aaron Celestino's first run scored as a Harbor Cat. Now batting. The third baseman from Cal Baptist, number six, Harrison Spawn. So here now is Harrison Spawn. Harper Cats just trying to keep the line moving, keep this game going as long as they can. They're now trailing by seven runs. Spawn at the plate, runners at first and third. Runner goes. This one is popped up, and it is not going to be caught. Good diving effort by Monroe in foul territory as that gets down for a foul ball. It'll be a strike to spawn, so nothing and won the count. But Monroe laid out to try to make that catch to end the ball game. That would have been some way to get the final out, but he could not make the catch. So spawn stays alive. It's nothing and one count. First and third, two gone in the bottom of the ninth inning. Hubbard Cats now with four runs on seven hits in the ball game. Runner goes for second again, and it's another foul. No balls, two strikes, and two out. Here's the pitch to spawn. It's up high, missing for ball one. Finally able to take second base on the fielder's indifference is Kyle Sherrod. So two men in scoring position now. If spawn can come up with a two out, two strike base hit. Here now is the one, two pitch. Swing and a miss by spawn. He strikes out and that is the ball game. So a successful day and a successful trip over to uh, Victoria for the Burnaby Bulldogs as they uh, tune up for their 2019 Baseball Canada Men's National Championship in Chatham, New Brunswick. They are victorious by a score of 11 to four over the Harbor Cats who will now get set for a three game series Tuesday to Thursday here at Wilson's Group Stadium against the Cowlitz Black Bears. Well, thanks for tuning in on this Sunday afternoon. Hope you enjoyed it on Go Live Broadcast and Shaw Spotlight. We'll see you on Tuesday after the day off. Tomorrow, Harbor Cats fall to the Burnaby Bulldogs by a final score of 11 to 4.
I'd like to thank you for attending today's game. We'd like to remind everyone not to drink and drive. Drive smart, play, dollar off coupons are available at the information booth located here.